All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to another video here traveling Costa Rica. Today, we're in Playa del Coco. Just finished my coffee here at Java. We're going to be walking down to the beach. Gracias. And checking out some things along the way. If this is your first time joining us here on our travels. Be sure to hit like, hit subscribe right here on YouTube. And leave us a comment with your thoughts, questions, requests. So we're going to be doing a longer video today of just walking. Normally our videos are a bit shorter. We'll try how this one turns out and see if you guys like it, see if you guys enjoy it. Leave me a comment if you think it's all right. So just had coffee there at Hava. Pretty cool, pretty cool spot. There's a, we're, right now we're in Flies del Coco. This is called the Las Palmas area. So back this way, you see there's tons of accommodations options. Tons of accommodations. There's little uh, condominium developments. And here's kind of the nexus for Las Palmas. There's a little grocery store back there, a mini grocery store. There's all kinds of businesses here. Very popular tattoo shop up there as well. And this is kind of the road that runs parallel the beach here in Playa del Coco. Check it out. They're doing some sidewalks here. Good to see. A lot of these beach towns can have, um, you know, people just walk down the beach and some, sometimes people drive fast, right? It's rainy and dark, whatever. So it's nice that they're putting in sidewalks. You can see them going right along the beach here. So that's cool. So down at the end here of this road is the Pacifico Beach Club. I think we'll end this video up towards Pacifico. We'll try to. So there's another shot of the commercial development here. Pueblito Norte, it's called. This building here is brand new. There's Red Panda, that's been here for a while. Red Panda is a popular restaurant. But I think they just moved. They were over on the other side there. Now they're here. And there's a sports bar here now too. So that's pretty cool. Some more options to hang out down at this end of the beach if you come to Playa del Coco. Now this road continues all the way to the main strip in Coco. And the main strip runs perpendicular to the beach here. So all the main businesses kind of run along away from the beach. But of course this road runs parallel and there's just tons of accommodations options up there. Now right there, right where that white car is coming, there's another uh, little commercial development. There's a jujitsu place and a coffee shop named Guayoyo there. So that's pretty cool, check that out. See golf carts are popular here. In Playa del Coco, golf carts are popular in a lot of these beach towns. Cool, let's go down and check out the beach. So in Playa del Coco, there's a bunch of these entrances to the beach. There's one down by the Pacifico Beach Club. And there's this one. I think there's another one we're gonna check out. When we come back up to the road here. There's like three or four, I think, and maybe a couple pedestrian ones. So you can often find parking here, but of course, if you park down on these roads like this, definitely uh, lock your vehicle and don't leave anything valuable. I know somebody who got their window smashed and a purse taken out on one of these roads. So there's no, you know, often nobody watching your car. So just don't leave stuff in it. So there's still some lots that haven't been developed here. And my understanding here in Costa Rica is this, this uh, real estate here, let's call it, this land is leased. So you can't technically buy it in permanence. It's kind of like you buy a, you buy the title from the city and it's like a 20 year term or something like that. And then of course they, they can decide whether or not you renew. It's kind of how they protect uh, the beaches here in Costa Rica. To contrast that to, for example, like Mexico or I was in Jamaica. And in Jamaica, the, the resort's kind of like flanked either side of a beach and they blocked people off. So only people on the resort could technically really get to the beach. So Costa Rica does a good job of protecting the beaches and ensuring they stay public, publicly accessible, which is really cool. So now here's the beach in Coco. Let's check it out real quick. We're maybe in the middle-ish of the beach here. So you can see there's a, there's a footpath here that goes along the beach, continues north. And then there's some parking here. And here's the water. Now I know a group of people that went out on a boat tour this morning. 
and basically, you know, some of the bigger boats out in, out in the water there, they'll send in a little boat to pick people up and shuttle them out, a little water taxi. Cool. So now just past that mountain ridge there, there's Playa Ocotal. We've done videos there before. Let me know if you guys want to see an updated video there as well. Just right there, you can see some cranes. That's where the Waldorf Astoria is being put in and Playa Penca's at that beach. It's pretty cool. We just did a cross country tour on a moto and there's another beach on the backside of this ridge called Calzone de Pobre, which means poor man's underpants, kind of cool name. And then all the way at the, the next beach over is Playa Hermosa, which is, in my opinion, one of the top beaches in Costa Rica for all things considered. You know, there's a lot of nice beaches. There's a lot of beaches that are like really pristine, but not many have all the things that Hermosa have. And so far as the calm water, the clean water, the amenities, the accommodations, the restaurants, everything like that, the road access in Hermosa is really great. But Playa, Playa del Coco is a great beach too, right? So the beach itself isn't the most perfect beach as some of them around here, but it is a good point to kick off your vacation, right? And stay, you can always come down, you can see people swimming in the water, right? But for example, Penka over there has perfectly clear water. Okatal has a black sand beach and the water there is perfectly clear too. A lot of snorkeling and stuff like that. So Coco is kind of central to a lot of really great beaches in my opinion, and it's the closest built-up beach town to the Liberia International Airport, which is pretty cool. Yesterday, I drove in here, and no traffic. It was 30 minutes. So with absolutely no traffic, 30 minutes to drive right past from the Liberia Airport right down here to Coco. See here, look at all this. Cool. Lots of shade. Now the one thing, if you come down here, I come down here to hang out every once in a while. And because it's more like traveled and there's more people having picnics here, I find there's ants. There's ants on some of the, like under the trees and stuff like that. So just, if you decide to come post up down here for the day, just check, make sure there's no ants. Cause I've done that before. And then all of a sudden I'm getting bit on my little toesies. It's not the most comfortable. And now you'll notice there's a bunch of boats here, okay? If you go down, like for example, to Hako or Uvita or Dominical, there's not many places you see beaches like this with all these boats. Yeah, I'll zoom in. And that's because the nature of all the beaches down here, it's kind of like offset. I presume the number one reason why it's calmer is these beaches are kind of like offset from the Pacific Ocean. So all the strong currents coming in get dissipated before they hit the shore. So it's pretty chill to be able to park your boats, stuff like that. You'll see in Okatal, there's a lot of boats parked there as well. Hermosa has a bit. And there is a marina further north called Marina Papagayo. So this whole area is kind of like the Papagayo Peninsula Bay. you see it referred to that often I do, at least. So some more, uh, you know, side-by-sides, I think these are called, right? You can get around Coco pretty easy on those. You can get to Okatal in one of those. Going to Hermosa, definitely not going to happen in a golf cart. So that's the thing. If you come here, you can get around in a golf cart easy enough between Coco and Okatal. But Hermosa's, you need, a, you need a car. You need something that's uh, able to drive a bit faster on the road legally. There's a boat coming in. Cool, and there's a lot of fishers here, fishermen. Every time I'm in Coco, I see tons of guys coming in, just coolers full of fish. We've even bought fish right off the beach before. It's pretty cool. I dig it. These are my favorite. Look at that. Just chopped right up. Bringing jet skis out. Cool. So you can rent jet skis here too. Let's continue uh, back up towards the town, this direction here. Oh, and there's an estuary here too. Let's check that out. 
estuaries are like the rivers that meet the beach. And some of them are, I don't know how to differentiate between what is just a river, what is an estuary, if they're all estuaries. Some of them are huge. And some of them are like seasonal in the rainy season. They'll be like long and deep. And then in the dry season, there'll be nothing. So right now we're here in the rainy season in Coco. So this is actually pretty deep, I'd say. Right here. Actually, you know what? We can go across it. So here's another road access. If you want to come down here and park, it's right up here. And there's a mermaid statue up there. A voluptuous mermaid. Now, I wouldn't recommend swimming in here. I don't know the cleanliness of it. I don't know what kind of runoff goes in there. Especially when it's murky like this. I don't think there's crocodiles in here. It's too uh, small. I've never seen anything like that in Coco. So I'm wearing these shoes here, guys. These things are great. I love these. The link's in the description below. They're like water shoes, but they're, they're also just like shoe shoes. So you can just go right out in the water and they drain out the bottom. I don't know how deep this is, actually. Just, let's go. Might as well just go. Be careful when you're crossing these things. They're one step forward and it can all of a sudden get pretty deep. Check it out, though. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty strong. Pretty strong. Pull back. That wasn't too bad. Probably like a foot and a half deep right there. Cool. Yeah, so guys, check the links down below. A lot of good stuff that I find for my travels here in Costa Rica. And these shoes are just so clutch. Because now they're just draining out the water, draining out the bottom. Check these out. I'll try to balance. Oh, yeah. I'm not a gymnast. So they'll just drain and then I can walk into town. So I love these shoes. Sometimes the uh, sand can get hot here. All right, cool. Good view. Somebody swimming. See a lot of people doing that here in Coco. Just doing like laps up and down the, up and down the beach. In fact, on one occasion, it was the craziest thing. A guy came up on the beach he was wearing a speedo with the uk flag on it so i i had to say hey man those those are awesome where'd you get them just so started talking it turns out this guy's a paddy rescue diver and what he was doing was swimming to that island right there i don't know how far he said he told me how far it was and for a second i didn't believe him i said because he was coming in from a swim and i thought that's that's a little cap as the kids would say, that's a little cap. But then I watched him do it and he went past the boats. I sat there watching this guy just baba, you know, his way through the water. So Paddy, I forget what it stands for. I know the D stands for divers. Probably the I stands for international. It's sad because I have a Paddy license to go scuba diving. It's the, it's the scuba diving license. Professional Associations of Divers International maybe probably what it stands for who knows let's go up right here so there's a bunch of dive shops in coco and i haven't gone diving in costa rica yet i most certainly intend to in the future but paddy expires so i would have to do like a refresher course i think just to get back up to snuff on the math so i don't you know get stuck under the water and something become a mermaid i don't know what would happen so here's kind of the beach strip. There's a little park right there for kids. Cool. This is the dock. It's, it's new. So if somebody says the dock and Coco, it's probably that one right there. Super chill. So once again, we're here in the rainy season. And this is the rainy season. This year, I find it's been not raining quite as much. In the afternoon, a couple hours here and there but not like monsoons. So this is like a little uh, outdoor shower thing. You can clean off your feet after you're swimming. Just super scenic down here. Oh yeah. 
There's a... I don't know what that is. Big tree. Cool. Guys, so if you're enjoying this format of content, just walking and talking, leave me a comment. Because normally I edit these videos, I make them a bit shorter, try to keep them concise and straight to the point, get the gist of a location. But a place like Coco, I mean, I think we could just walk around and talk and chill and whatever. So this is kind of like the central area of the beach strip, the walking area. There's the big tree. So a lot of people will hang out at the tree there. Obviously provides a lot of shade, it's super cool. Now further on this way, we're not gonna go down the rest of this path. We've done other videos here before, you can check that out on the channel, Fly Still Coco. There's a basketball court. There's another little pier down there you can hang out, take cool pictures. And there's parking down there, more parking. And the beach just continues all the way down. So the beach down there I find is a little bit more murky. A lot of people fish down there though. Hand fishing. Just throwing the line from hand and pulling it in and reeling it in. Sometimes just around a water bottle or something like that. And I think that's called hand fishing when you like throw it. Because I've done Billy hand fishing before. Billy hand fishing, I think, is when you jump off a rock and try to catch a hand, try to catch a fish with your hands, with your bare hands. That obviously failed, but I did attempt it. So I can speak on that matter. So I think when you do the throw it, it's called hand fishing. I don't know. Let me know if you're a fisherman, what the difference is. Guys, I'm just talking in a lot of these videos. If I say something wrong, just let me know, you know. Check out this turkey. Chicken. <laughs> let me know, is that a turkey or chicken? Who knows? Just kidding. I get berated sometimes in the comments. Some people just want to let me know what they think. But I appreciate it. I appreciate all your comments, especially the positive ones. So I'm trying to be positive. I'm in Costa Rica. Super chill, super sunny. There's a golf cart. Once again, the golf cart life down here. All right, here we go, here we go. Now, if you park down here, there's these people with vests on. They're called watchies. Watchy watchies. You can give them some money for watching your car, the watchman. Some of them are nicer than others. I usually try to park with the ones that are nice and pleasant. Because some of them are just kind of intrusive and rude, I'd say. So here we are. Now, this little shop here, it's kind of hidden. There's a gift shop in there. Sometimes I get cigars in there. There is a cigar shop here. It's a bit more expensive cigars. There are actually real cigars though up there. Super good cigars. I smoke cigars. I smoke. I try to smoke pipe tobacco though. Pipe tobacco is kind of difficult to locate in Costa Rica. Not too many people smoke pipe tobacco here. And funnily enough, some of the little Chinese supermarkets carry pipe tobacco. But if you smoke pipe tobacco in Costa Rica, I find one of the most reliable places to get is in San Pedro, in San Jose. It's like a little town west of San Jose. West in San Jose. Got all kinds of tobacco shops there. There's a souvenir shop. So guys, this is like the main strip, as I said, runs perpendicular. And I don't want to use big words in my video, I just don't know how else to say it. Runs away from the beach so you know a lot of towns this will be configured as though the all the restaurants there's liberty man good advertising man that was slick liberty is actually who my uh when i use a sim card here costa rica i have a sim card because i spend enough time here it's with liberty that was good though man Good on him. Hey, if somebody, if a manager from Liberty sees this video, promote that guy. Hella smart. <laughs> now, if you, uh, if you're just coming to Costa Rica and you don't want to, what a segue to side. If you don't want to hunt down a SIM card, refill a SIM card, do all that stuff, you can actually get eSIMs. 
So a lot of new phones have a eSIM slot. So you know a SIM card, you put it in your phone. An eSIM is just like a slot on your phone. It's a digital like a, a space. You can get programs that can connect you wirelessly. So I actually signed up with a company called Sali and I was testing theirs from the guys who uh, did NordVPN. I use NordVPN as well. And I'll put a link for that below. You can check that out. It just, you can download this app while you're, you know, before you come to Costa Rica, when you land, you'll have connectivity. And I was testing it, it's very fast, it's pretty convenient. Super good. So as always, check the link in the description below for that. But if you stay here, there's other options for cell phones. Liberty is one of them. Now, you can get a Liberty SIM card, but I don't know if you can refill it readily. I know with Colby, Colby's like the national carrier. You can refill it, but then I find when I first came here before I just signed up on a plan, I was always continually having to go to the store and refill it. I would lose connection and then I would have to find a store that had the Colby logo and they only accept cash and stuff like that. Let's take a pause here for a second. So there's Dave's All Day Breakfast. That's a new one. Pizza Hub up there. Dual is an interesting business. So they actually import stuff. You get like a P.O. box in Miami and they then ship it here. And it costs, you know, if you're doing free Amazon shipping. You're probably paying as much for shipping as you are for the stuff you're getting shipped. But it gets here pretty quick most often. So when I need something that I can't find here in Costa Rica readily, I'll often use Dual. So there's a seafood place up there. There's Santorini, Greek restaurant. It's across the street here. Santorini uh, we go to pretty often. Lots of people love the food there. Octopus, looking pretty bleached. Sun's getting to him. He doesn't use sunscreen. Guys, use sunscreen. When you come here to Costa Rica, I see so many people walking around. Must be on their second, third day, just beat red. So I don't play games with that anymore. I just use sunscreen. I'll put a link for my favorite sunscreen in the description below. It's like a roll-on. It's like a deodorant stick rolls on. I like it. I actually prefer it. It's not like moist. There's Lecoq. Lecoq is great. Not only in name, but in food. They have like shawarma and stuff like that. Healthy options. Some more uh, restaurants here. Awesome. Now I'm gonna stop in the shade for a second because I can feel my phone is getting hot from being in the sun. So guys, what's going on here? What's this busy intersection here? This road goes to Okotal. This is the road you'll turn out that goes to Okotal. And this is where you turn, right here. So you can see there's a super compro here. So if you're gonna go to Okotal, that's kind of where you'd go. There's some restaurants over there. And down in this direction also, there's a fruit market I like going to. I forget the name of it. It's just like right down, you know, you can see it before you start making turns and stuff like that. If you're going to Cocoa Bay Estates, that's also the direction. There. Okay, hopefully my phone doesn't melt out in the sun here once again. You can see the bus stopping here. What bus is this? This is Liberia to Playa del Coco. So I think that's kind of like an intermunicipal bus. There's another bus line, Palmatan to Liberia, that goes um, both to Liberia and it also goes to San Jose. There's the Patty Dive Shop. This is Rich Coast Diving right here. They have a bunch of dive gear. You can buy you can buy snorkeling stuff in there. If you're coming here and you want to go snorkeling, I suggest bring your snorkel gear. And of course, there's a link in the description below for the snorkel gear that I use. And it's good because the fins are short. I like short fins. When I'm snorkeling, it allows me better like maneuverability. 
got to work harder, but when I'm snorkeling by the coast trying to film uh, fish and all that kind of stuff, I like being able to move fast because sometimes the tides roll in and push you around. So it's a good Cressy kit that I have. So of course, check the check the description. It's all the links are there. And the links are at sightsandsounds.co. I have a website. Because why not? Guys, there's the gym. This is the gym that I go to when I'm in Coco. Most often, if not the beach. It's pretty good. They got a lot of cardio stuff. They got machines. They got a free weight. And an Olympic lifting area. Cross training area. Pull up bars. All kinds of stuff. So here's the supermarket. There's a lot of these small independently owned supermarkets. You often see an Imperial sign out front. That's the beer brand, but they, it's pretty much a grocery store. Cool. They, they, have, they have pipe tobacco here. Funnily enough, <laughs> there's an ethnic Indian restaurant, Nan, Nans and Curry's. Super cool. I've had Indian food here uh, in Cocoa before. It's delicious. It's a good treat. It's Banco Nacional. That's where I take cash out with my credit card. This is like the, one of the national banks here in Costa Rica. Put your credit card in the machine and take out local currency. So that's what you'd be looking for. And these get, these are everywhere. And I've never had a problem with my card getting eaten and not getting spit out, something like that. Hola. You know, for example, Churros, she is not going to accept a credit card. So if you're, you know, that's why it's good to have cash, right? If you're driving, you see some roadside vendor with some delicious food, fruits, anything like that. Having a bit of cash on hand is great. This place is new here. Chicken, I had chicken there. It's pretty good. I try to eat healthy and I was just looking for some protein. You know, it's a good hit. It's a deep breath, it's a KFC chicken. Now we're getting up towards where I said we'd end up. How long have we been going? Oh, 27 minutes. This is a longer video. So this area right here, okay, it's kind of loud. Oh, I'm going to cross. This is Pacifico. All right. So Pacifico is this development that's here in Coco. It's like high end. Super nice. That's... That's why I can't go in there. I'm not wearing a shirt right now. And I'm not, I'm not that guy. No, but I go in there, I go in there often. I'll put a shirt on, I'll go in there. But it's uh, super nice. So in back in that way, there's a big development. There's like freehold condos, um, there's houses. They're building more condos back there. And, you know, I think if I understand correctly, there's an expectation that you spend a certain amount of money at these businesses to, you know, keep the, keep the development propped up. But they have like security and you can see like the whole development is like this, like curated and pretty stuff. There's restaurants right in here. There's a back bank in there. And there's offices in here too, like on the second floor and stuff like that. There you go, free, free advertising for Pacifico on the video. So what's this place? They sell appliances and motorcycles and mattresses, everything. There is a Mega Super right there. I'm once again staying in the shade because I'm hot. Mega Super is like a grocery store. They got like low prices. And actually when you, when you go to Mega Super, you can give them your passport number and they'll sign you up for like a points card. So you get discounts on the stuff you're buying and I think you accumulate points. They just ask for your passport number when you, uh, when you go in. So if you're here long enough, you're like snowbirding it. It's probably worth doing the mega super thing. Look at that, that's so nice. I wish I wore clothes though, but I don't. Okay, so now Auto Mercado right here. So I'm from uh, Canada, guys. And I don't know what the equivalent in the United States would be, but in Canada, you have a grocery store like Sobeys. Auto Mercado is kind of like Sobeys. It's like higher end. They have like imported stuff. Hold on. 
but you're going to pay higher end prices at Auto Mercado. Right, so it's right over here. We can walk up there. And there's like literally security guards like right outside of Auto Mercado, so. They're super chill. Everybody's chill here. There's Auto Mercado. You can see there's a subway. I talk a lot about Pops. Pops has like ice cream and they're like everywhere across Costa Rica. You see Pops everywhere. There's a blood clinic down at the end. I've done blood work down there. Good prices for like private medical services here in Costa Rica. There's San Carlos, I get materials there. It's a good store. Good store, ask for Alex. Good guy, good guy Alex. Cool, and there is Mega Super. So it's a plaza and there's actually a smoothie bar right there too. So guys, I think we're gonna call it there. We've been going for 30 minutes. Wow, what a good walk. Walk and talk once again. Be sure to hit like, hit subscribe right here on YouTube. Leave me a comment and let me know if this longer format of video, if you dig it, if you dig just the walk and talk, or if you're more into the edited versions, which are like five to 10 minutes, I could do both. I mean, hey, I could do both. It's all good. Thanks for watching. See you soon here, your vacation in Costa Rica. Bye now.